Hey guys, just wanted to shoot another quick video here. Um, I have a female here that just laid. For some reason, I had her marked down to lay on August 9th, um, and I'm starting to go through my numbers, and I must have counted wrong. I don't know why I put that date. Um, I looked at when she shed and when she ovulated, and uh, basically, I looked at how many days it's taken her to lay in the past, and right around today is when she should have laid, so I'm glad I was home to catch this, and. I'm glad I just happened to peek in here, but oh yeah, that looks like a lot of eggs and she looks very mad. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Okay. Okay you guys situated here oh get me a better photo without getting tagged she is definitely very alert so let's see get a bin open here for her wow that's a lot of eggs They look like very good eggs and they're all stuck together. All right. Wow. Yeah, she's a big girl. Looks like she's done well. Okay, please don't bite me. So, what do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Dang. We'll see if I can squeeze all these eggs into one bin. They look relatively flat. All right, so we gotta put some water in here. So uh, for anybody wondering, for in terms of uh, mixing vermiculite, um, I do the one to one ratio by weight. So. At the beginning of the season, I weigh out all these uh, bins with 250 grams of vermiculite. So, should have to put 250 grams of water in there to get the right mixture. So, there we go. Just mix this up quickly. As most of you watching probably already know, this is what you're looking for. You want it to clump together, but no water to come out when you squeeze it. But you want it to form a ball like that. Even it out here with my brush. It's an old uh, Ralph Davis technique from his videos back in the day. And then we kind of carve out a little spot for the eggs like I said I might <laughs> might need two bins for this kind of depends how well these are stuck so I'm gonna see if this one will come off and we're free okay so I'm gonna leave that egg right there without rotating it all right wow it's a big clutch so I don't want it to touch the sides too much, really. Looks like I don't have much of a choice. It is touching, but we'll just have to keep a close eye on it. Um, so let's find a spot for that last egg. So let's move the clutch down a little. Okay, get this guy nestled in here. So just real quick, let's shut off the lights. Uh, oh, I gotta grab my flashlight. Okay, got my flashlight. Let's uh, get the lights off here. Let's turn this off. So, what we're looking for here is just some nice veins. So, that's the egg. I'm just gonna rotate this a little bit. So, what we're looking for is we want these um, veins up on top. But, this is a pretty fresh clutch, so I wouldn't worry too much, so... Oh yeah, these look like nice, healthy eggs. Can't really get that one under there. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. 
That one's a little hidden too. But this female's always had good clutches. Okay, they look good. Um, all right. So I'm just going to pop this. And I also like to make sure that they're not touching the, the top of the box. Um, that's an easy way for once the moisture starts building up, like you can see in some of these boxes up here, there's just moisture on the side. If the eggs were touching the top, um, it would probably cause issues. It would cause that egg on the top to go bad. So we'll put this clutch here. So now I'll show you guys kind of the process that I go through when a female has laid eggs. So I've taken the bedding out there. Get these labels here which are for the clutch box itself in the incubator that's her card that we'll have to do some writing on so we'll go give her tub a rinse nice and clean there's some fresh bedding here Back in her slot here, let's get her some water. Now we'll uh, get her back in her tub, but before we do that, the last thing I like to do here is uh, give her a little bath, to get that egg scent off her, just like we washed her tub. So we just get the water lukewarm and just uh, kind of spray her down a little bit. Make sure you get her belly where the eggs were. She's, uh, she's not too concave. She's looking pretty good for having just laid 12 eggs. Her back there. Good job. Now we can uh, do the paperwork. The best part. So this is her card. Um, it's in this little sleeve here. Um, but I have her actual breeding card on the outside here. So we can see when she ovulated, when she had her shed. So we'll just... Uh, mark down here when she laid and what she laid she was actually bred to two different males my uh, pastel champagne and the uh, queen bee so now we can take this these stickers just indicated the males that she was bred to um, the red I put on at the beginning of the season meaning I wanted to breed her in 2015 and then I put the green F when she started getting follicles the uh, yellow O here when she ovulated, and of course the blue S when she had her pre-lay shed. So now that she's all done, we just take them all off. That goes back on her bin. She is done there. Let's find her page in the record book. So there's her page with her information, her previous breeding cards. Um, so we'll tuck this now that that's done in there. And we'll take her sheet out here. This is her information from the previous clutches she's laid. We've got her all filled in there. Tuck this away. And the last thing to do is fill out the clutch label. So and we'll just label the clutch here. And that's it. Only got one female left to lay. My bumblebee female. And then that's it for the season. Um, Alright, thanks for watching guys.